Good evening and welcome to the API's Iron Government program for Tuesday, July 20th, 2021. Iron Government brings you the latest on government's plans, programs, policies and projects. I am Bart Nolver. Just ahead on this evening's program, efforts are being made to improve the local transportation sector. The youth are vulnerable to benefit from a kind donation from the people of Taiwan. SBG Relief USA Inc. continues to find ways to assist in their recovery efforts. More donations pour into the country, this time from the UK SBG Friendship Trust. And women are urged to look out for the signs of cervical cancer. These stories and more are just ahead. But first, let's join Nellie's Cupid for Newswatch. Good evening. Welcome to this edition of Newswatch for Tuesday, July 20, 2021. I'm Nelly Skipid. Thanks for joining us. Prime Minister the Honorable Dr. Ralph Gonzalez says a decision was made that on Friday, July 23, 2021, the all clear will be given for people currently in shelters and other private residences to return to Chateau Belay and Fitzhughes. Dr. Gonzalez was at the time speaking on the NBC radio program, Aing La Sofre. Prime Minister Gonzalez says people have begun returning to the areas and cleanup work is progressing, with government expecting this to be completed by July 23. Chateaubelle is almost completely cleaned up and fit use by and large. They're working on the school now, the Golden Grove playing field. We call Lotto to coordinate because they've been doing, been, been, been running the field really with Sports Council, them and, and um, Braxa to, to do that cleaning up. And I want them to proceed and have that cleaned up before the 23rd. You know, we could say a little earlier, but to be safe. But a lot of people have moved back down in Chateau. And, and uh, many families have gone to, 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 to Fitzhugh's as, as we have done the cleaning up and they have done cleaning up. But we'll give you all clear for those officially by the 23rd, on the 23rd. So there's a deadline working with, 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 with that. Prime Minister the Honorable Dr. Ralph Gonzalez made a call for Vincentians to become healthier consumers as a gateway to longer life. The call was made amidst an increase in the number of diabetes and hypertensive cases in this country. Dr. Gonzalez was at the time speaking at the handover and opening ceremony of the Barley Smart Health Center on Friday, July 16. He urged Vincentians to watch the food they consume and to have regular health checks done. We don't eat as much fruit and vegetables as, as, as we should, and we have them around. Now pay attention to what you're eating, and pay attention to what you're drinking. And check. Go to your health center, and check your blood sugar level. Take the advice of your nurse or doctor. Check your pressure. Director of the National Emergency Management Organization, Michelle Forbes, was on hand for a donation of relief supplies and equipment, compliments the SVG Relief USA Inc., a non-profit organization based in New York. The equipment were obtained through a massive relief drive coordinated through various agencies within the Vincentian diaspora and will go towards assisting various organizations across St. Vincent and the Grenadines with the ongoing cleanup efforts. Director of Nemo Michelle Forbes said the donation is especially timely and is expected to go a long way in assisting the country. Living in a diaspora, when something happens at home, you feel it as if it is, has impacted you. And I really want to thank every single in Vincentian and non Vincentian who would have participated in a drive led by Consul General Prince and SVG Relief um, USA Inc. in terms of making every effort to get items, relief items for the people of St. Vincent and the Grenadines, and especially those who have been displaced and impacted by the um, La Soufre volcanic eruptions. As we're in the early stage of recovery, agencies like Bragsa who have done a mammoth task in, in the cleanup operations um, throughout the orange and the red zones to really make life a little bit more comfortable for those persons who are returning. These items are going to be needed at the police stations, at the Kingston Town Board because we know we have flooding in Kingston from time to time and you have to do your, your own cleaning but that they will that they, I want to ask the agency to really use them 
as part of the community too because each police station is situated within a community and we have to be part of that community in, in lending our support to those various communities. We will bring you more on this event later in our program. Althea Gordon has been appointed Campus Registrar of the University of the West Indies Open Campus. Gordon's appointment take effect on August 1, 2021. She replaces Karen Ford Warner, who retires at the end of July 2021. Althea Gordon has a long history at the UWA, having joined the Mona campus in 1987 in the bursary. She subsequently worked in examinations, outreach and awards at the Faculty of Humanities. Gordon is Senior Assistant Registrar in the International Students' Office, Office of the Campus Registrar at the UWA Mona campus. Gordon brings to the open campus many years of experience in international education, having served on various committees dealing in international education, including NAFSA, European Association for International Education, and the Institute for International Education. Principal and Pro Vice Chancellor of the Open Campus, Dr. Luz Longsworth, welcomed Gordon to the Open Campus family. This is where we end News Watch for this evening. I am Nelly Skipid. The Iron Government program continues. Have a good evening. Diabetes is among the top three leading causes of death. Are you living with diabetes? If so, you may be at risk for developing complications, especially during this COVID pandemic. Let's tackle this problem by complying with taking your medication, increasing your physical activities, increasing eating a balanced and nutritious diet, checking your feet as foot care is important, and contacting your healthcare provider. Remember, diabetes can lead to blindness, amputation and numerous harmful and life-threatening effects. Protect yourself. Know your numbers. Hearts Movement SVG reminds you to love your body and treat it right. Your health is shared responsibility. Welcome back. You're watching the APIs and Government. As part of an ongoing trust to transform the local transportation sector, the government of St. Vincent and Grandines, in partnership with the Republic of China, Taiwan, is currently implementing the Intelligent Bus Management and Monitoring System project. The executing agency of this project is the Information Technology Department, ITSD, in the Ministry of Information Technology. The project aims to improve the management of the public transportation sector and enhance surveillance in public areas. The API's Assisi Stam spoke with coordinator of the project, Mrs. Donette O'Neill, to find out the status of the project. Let's listen. If you're a commuter, you would know that there are times when you'd have to wait at a bus stop for a bus for an extended period. Can you imagine not having to do that? Well, your imagination can turn into a reality with the government of St. Vincent and the Grenadines Intelligent Bus Management and Monitoring System Project. With me today is Mrs. Donette O'Neill, the coordinator of this project. Thank you so much for joining us on our program. You're welcome. The SVG monitoring, management and monitoring of, the, of this project has two phases. Can you tell me about the phases and where we are at with them? Okay, so um, the Intelligent Bus Management and Monitoring Project, there's the first phase, which is the CCTV that was implemented, implemented last year. This has currently been launched and um, it's ongoing. The um, police are monitoring the cameras and they have been able to resolve certain crimes as well. Persons who would have gotten into accidents would have requested footage to verify that they were in the right or if they were in the wrong. So that phase has already started and is ongoing. The other phase which we are launching and testing at the moment is the e-bus phase, where earlier this year we would have installed 40 digital bus stands across the coast and Kingston of St. Vincent and the Grenadines. And um, we had installed some 
onboard units on some bus and we are currently doing the installation at the moment. At this time we have installed 29 onboard units on buses and uh, we are reaching out to persons to join on to the project because we're at the testing phase and the more buses that are on is the better we are able to test and get the expected arrival times to be more accurate because as the buses would pass to the different bus stops then the signal will be sent from the onboard unit to the server the server computes the approximate time and it would then send it to the um, bus stands and there's also the third phase where there's a mobile inquiry an app has been developed and is in a testing phase where you can also be at your desk or be at home and check the expected arrival time you said you want more people to come on board. Have you been doing anything in terms of sensitizing the Vincentian public about this whole system and what it would mean for them? Well, there, there's the ICT Facebook page and there's also, we are having some awareness at the Windward Bus Terminal. How receptive has, has the public been uh, in this regard? Well, the... the um, customers, as in the passengers, they are very excited about it. Very, very excited about it. But there is some hesitancy in the bus drivers or the van drivers. Some may have seen about tracking and, and all of these kind of things. And um, we have tried over and over to tell them this is not a tracking incident. This is not going to be used by the police. This is a transport system. And this is to aid and to facilitate the um, bus drivers and the passengers to make their commute easier. Cut down the time, waiting time. You wouldn't have to be standing in the rain or in hot sun for such a long time when you can go online or go on the app and check the expected arrival time. So there was a bit of hesitancy. But this is not a tracking device. This is for facilitation of the passengers and the bus drivers because if I am a passenger, right, and I know my bus is expected to be at this bus stop for um, in about 10, 15 minutes, and I am nearby, I would just go when it's close. I would just stand up there for half an hour before and wait forever. So it's, it's a facilitation. Many bus drivers have also said that, oh, my people just call me. And I'll tell them I'm here or I'm there. But this is a more structured system. It's more structured yes. and you're not supposed to be using your cell phone when you're driving. Mm -hmm. So that is a danger. We're trying to cut down on that danger. And what if the person doesn't have credit? Mm -hmm. How are they going to call you? They could just go by the bus stand and say, okay, it's expected around this time. Or they use the app or the website. So, so you'd, you'd have a system at the bus stop, what would say, when a particular bus would arrive, but that bus would have to be registered under your system? Yes, they would have to be registered. Only when they're registered, when their um, number would be showing up on the system. So the digital bus stands that have the solar panels, mm -hmm. right, this is where it would be displaying the expected bus arrival time, but only if you're registered would, you, would your bus be showing there. Also, this, um, the onboard units, last year we had meeting with um, representatives from the, from the Bus Driver Association and they were saying that a lot of persons would want something like that to be on all the time. So in the design of it, they created an on-off button where when you start your route, you turn it on. When you're finished for the day, you turn it off. Over time, I've seen where people, members of the public, would vandalize public facilities. Do you have anything in place to avoid things like that? Well, I know you have the cameras and stuff, so that would be able to monitor vandalism as well? Well, we have a lot of the cameras are looking at the bus stops, but not all of them. Oh. And unfortunately, one has already been vandalized. Yes, one of the um, bus stands. I don't know if they use a big stone or one has been vandalized. But we, um, we, all deal, we have already um, dealt with that already. So we're really asking the public to please take care of the property. It's public property. They are very expensive. And the fact that you mentioned expensive, tell us how, how costly is this undertaking? Well, the, the overall cost of the project, both CCTV 
and eBus is 1.8 million US. And we're doing this in partnership with the government of Taiwan? Yes, this is um, an IT related project in the government uh, with the government of Republic of China on Taiwan. Mm -hmm. They assist us in various areas, IT, agriculture, tourism, and my unit, the Information Technology Services Division, work with them on IT related projects. Mm -hmm. So when would the entire project be completed? We're hoping that by the end of the year, it will be completed, but at this phase, we are testing and we are asking for all those drivers who have the onboard devices installed now to switch it on so we could continue testing. And we're inviting bus owners and bus drivers to join as we have the installation dates for this month, the 10th, the 17th, the 24th and the 31st of July at the National Public Library from 9 to 5 p.m. So your department, the ITSD, is dealing with the implementation right. of this project. After the project is completed, who would oversee the project? After the project is completed, there are different phases that will be overseen by different units. The CCTV part would be overseen by the police. The eBus part by ITSD and transport but any networking and internet part, anything IT related, ITSD would be assisting both parties. Is okay. any training being done with the police at the moment in terms of handling the, the CCTV? Training was already done okay. um, in regards to CCTV. So currently they are already using it to assist in crimes. Training, and there's also the traffic part where they are um, analyzing the traffic because they are traffic um, counting cameras as well, specifically for that. Because I've, I've seen where police at the Kittles police station were monitoring. Is that the only station where you, you've you conducted training or where police are exposed to this? Yes, these police were specifically trained for this task. They, that is their unit. We have um, some raffles that we have oh, put so you out. have incentives. We have incentives. <laughs> Yay! Yes. Everyone loves incentives. Yes, they do. So we have um, gas vouchers. The first 50 buses that sign on will be receiving gas vouchers. Also, we have a raffle every two weeks. The 30th of July, we're going to um, do the same thing. And this time we'll be pulling out one vehicle number and that person will win $200. And the 13th of August, we'll also do the same, and this person would win $300. Are there any challenges that you've encountered while challenges implementing this project? Is, um, mainly, uh, mainly resistance, because there's a lot of things going on in St. Vincent, the situation with COVID, the um, volcano. So there are a lot of things happened this year. And because of many restrictions on the van drivers, they have caution or they have a bit of anger against the project. So some may say gas prices go up, this happened, I can't make money, I'm not signing on to the project. Oh, so they're thinking that. that they're more important matters. Yes. Okay. So there might be a negative if, um, response because all of these things. Well, I'm giving you an opportunity to, to appeal to the van drivers to come on board, so. Yes, van drivers, we need you on board for the system to work efficiently. We are also appealing to the bus owners, sign on the onboard units. They are being installed free of charge. You are not paying anything at all. All you have to do is show up at the National Public Library between the dates I would have mentioned before and say that you want to be a part of this project. How do they reach you to get more information on the project? Well, they could call the ITSD department at the telephone number 4571007 and they could state their interests and we could organize or remind them of the dates of installation for the onboard units and then we'll go from there. That was Mrs. Donette O'Neill and she is the project coordinator of the SVG Intelligent Bus Management and Monitoring System project. Thank you so much for joining us for this segment. I'm Rishi CSM. Up next, this country receives timely support from the people of Taiwan. The hurricane season is upon us 
and as we know, hurricanes can be dangerous. Listening to the hurricane warning messages and planning ahead can reduce the chances of injury or major property damage. Before a storm or hurricane hits, get to know your emergency shelters. Contact Nemo for the closest shelter to you. Have disaster supplies on hand, flashlight and extra batteries, portable battery operated radio and extra batteries, first aid kit, non-perishable canned food and water, non-electric can opener, essential medicines, cash and credit cards, and sturdy shoes and raincoats. Where possible, apply hurricane roof straps. Review your insurance policy and ensure you have adequate coverage. Do not take chances with your life and property. Be hurricane ready today. Welcome back. The government and people of Taiwan continue to show solidarity with the government and people of SVG with their continued donations of emergency supplies. The latest donations was that of a 20-foot container worth of supplies handed over to representatives of the Ministry of Education and the Ministry of National Mobilization, Youth and Social Development. Here's more. As this country continues to grapple with a multitude of challenges, the people of the Republic of China, Taiwan, have once again extended a helping hand. This, as the organization Simply Help, through the Embassy of Taiwan, donated $63,000 worth of supplies to assist the youth and underprivileged. Accepting a donation of 10 computers and a generator was Minister of Education, the Honorable Curtis King. Minister King said the donation is a timely one given the challenges created by the volcanic eruptions of April 9th and the COVID-19 pandemic on the youth. He said the donation also comes at an apt time, as July 15th was celebrated globally as World Youth Skills Day. We have, as a result of these combined challenges, been faced with a situation where our youth and students have been severely affected in terms of their education and training. And therefore, it is important that as policymakers, we explore all the opportunities to provide our youth and students with the environment in which they could attain some level of recovery to the loss that they would have experienced in their education and training. And therefore, we thank the embassy, the local embassy of the Republic of China on Taiwan and the Simply Help Foundation for the magnanimous gesture which is being made here this morning. And as the ambassador said, this is only part of an ongoing program where they provide such support. But certainly, where the computers are concerned, and these, these computers, I can publicly say, will be placed at the Doris Mackey Resource Center at Upper Cane Hall. Because that facility is used regularly by members of the public and more importantly, it provides the sort of training that would enhance the vocational and training and education that our young people so need. I need to remind persons that it is said that during this COVID-19 pandemic. Young people, that is to say between the ages of 15 to 24, have been the most severely affected. In fact, some figures point to the fact that 8.7%, there was an 8.7% drop in the employment of young people over the 2020 year. And that compares to about 3.5% for persons older, adults then. 
older than 24. So that, as I'm indicating, these resources are going to help us to help our young people to develop a greater level of resilience when faced with these sort of challenges because we have to think in terms of post-COVID-19 and also recovery. Minister of National Mobilization, the Honorable Orando Brewster, took the opportunity to thank the people of Taiwan for their continued support. This particular donation today consists of items such as clothing, shoes, children's supplies such as toys, face shield, masks, and additionally, we have some computers, and as the Honorable Curtis King, the Minister of Education, mentioned, the computers are coming in at a very important time where we are not able to do our face-to-face -face learning, and we rely now on the technology. And I'm sure that the, the Ministry of Education is well pleased with these donations that is coming here to us today from Simply Help and the government of Taiwan, on China, the government of Taiwan. For all this, Ambassador, we say a thank you for tirelessly working to make sure that our people here in St. Vincent and the Grenadines are provided with the much needed supplies through your efforts. And at this time, I want you to permit me to celebrate our long-standing relationships of two nations. We are on the eve of our 40th anniversary, four decades, it's a long time, and we are happy to be in such a relationship with the people of the Republic of China and Taiwan. And we have seen leaps and bounds in all avenues, not just here in the donation, but as well a program to our ministry. The YES program has been funded through the, the, the Republic of China and Taiwan government. And we look forward for the continuing working relationship. And I notice our boxes today are branded Taiwan Helps. And Taiwan has been helping this nation of St. Vincent and the Grenadines for close to 40 years. And we appreciate all that you have done thus far. And we continue to look forward for our continuous working relationship moving beyond leaps and bounds. Minister Brewster also specifically recognized Ambassador Calvin Ho for the work he has done over the years. Ambassador, while it is my understanding that your tour of duty may come to an end this year, my government and people of this blessed nation wish to express our, our gratitude for your tenure here. You have served us and you have served us well. You have exemplified the true meaning of what it means to be an ambassador. You have represented the government and the people of the Republic of China on Taiwan with pride, with humility, and with great servanthood. The contribution you have made will not go unnoticed. And as you return home, may this country have a special place in your heart. <laughs> and as you consider any time you want a vacation, I know you would always choose to come back here to St. Vincent <coughs> and the Grenadines. And on that note, I want to end this morning by wishing you God's richest blessing as you move on to other endeavors. And we are grateful and thankful to the government of the Republic of China on Taiwan. Also giving remarks was Taiwan's ambassador to SVG, Calvin Ho, who said it is hoped that the donation will help to improve the lives of children here. He said it is hoped that the relationship between SVG and Taiwan can be strengthened. As I said, this is only the first container of this year. Uh, so I'm, I'm looking forward to, uh, to uh, attending a second one, a third one in the near future. And this year, uh, we just mentioned that this year marks the uh, 40th anniversary of our dip diplomatic ties. And um, so you can see some uh, image there. 
my government and our people really cherish and value uh, our bilateral relations. And, and all the collaboration in the years, we support each other. You support us, uh, our international participation, and we share with you our uh, experience uh, of its development. And um, I, I myself, that I always feel very honored uh, and great pleasure to work here in uh, of this post. And and um, I, uh, uh, I believe in in the future, our friendship will be further enhanced and strengthened uh, with um, you know um, collaboration like this. The handing over ceremony coincides with the 40th anniversary of diplomatic relations between SVG and Taiwan. Up next, SVG Relief USA Inc. needs much needed equipment. As we battle the unseen enemy, COVID-19, remember to be kind to each other, be a good neighbor, help someone less fortunate than yourself, be your brother's keeper. Together, we can overcome COVID-19. A message by the National Reconciliation Advisory Committee. Welcome back. As St. Vincent and the Grandines continues to recover from the disruptions of the explosive events of the Latifre volcano on April 2021, numerous organizations are pitching in to provide much needed support and the ongoing efforts. Recently, the Vincentian Diaspora, through the New York-based SVG Relief USA Inc., handed over a significant donation of equipment that will benefit a number of organizations here in SVG. The API's Hala John tells us more in this report. Donation of relief supplies was handed over to various agencies last Friday, July 16th at the Annersvale Supply Hub. The items, including power washers, wet vacs, and water pumps, are expected to be utilized in the ongoing cleanup efforts following the explosive eruptions of the Lassofre volcano earlier this year. SVG Relief USA Inc., a nonprofit organization based in New York, coordinated the effort, which accumulated and mobilized over five 40 foot containers from the Vincentian diaspora within the United States. During the handing over ceremony, Councillor General Howie Prince gave further details on the donation. When last of erupted, we were all very concerned from, from those of us who live and work in the United States. And we decided that the, the best that we could do is to do the best that we can to help our country. So from the consulate of St. Vincent Grenadines and other organizations in the United States, we came together and decided that we were going to do a massive relief mobilization effort to gather and to send to St. Vincent Grenadines relief to our people who have been displaced by Las of Ray volcano and, and its eruptions. Today we're happy to be on the ground in St. Vincent Grenadines very happy indeed to hand over, symbolical in some cases, but real in other cases, the fruits of our labor from the work that we've done in New York. Today we're happy that the recipients who are around the table will receive what we have been able to amass. And we hope and we believe that our efforts would go some way in alleviating the suffering that our people have faced since the eruption of the last of the volcano. Public Relations Officer of SVG Relief USA Inc., Atiba Williams, in his remarks, said that representatives of his organization were in the island on a fact-finding mission, the results of which are expected to be disseminated in the coming weeks. We're just here today to officially hand over the items which we receive. We had a generous donations from our point support in New York and around the U.S with supplies that we have here in St. Vincent Grenadines on the ground. We are basically here on a fact-finding mission, which should have lasted seven days, but unfortunately it took almost all of our vacation time, which is three weeks. So nevertheless, we were good. We were able to, to, to make it in-depth into St. Vincent Grenadines on the leeward side and on the windward side. We got as far as the northern tip on Fancy and, and right down to Richmond River. Also, so we have a, had an in-depth look. We have met with the various agencies that is handling the relief supply and the relief efforts. 
So and we are pleased to 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 what what we have been seeing. Um, there there are some areas of concern, but but those can be addressed and and um, will be addressed. We'll be making a full report public when we get back, and we'll be doing that via press conference, and we'll be sending a copy of the report to all our partners here in St. Vincent Grenadines. Minister of State within the Office of the Prime Minister with responsibility for foreign affairs and foreign trade, Kazel Peters, was also present for the handover and used the opportunity to thank the Vincentian diaspora for their continued outpouring of support during this nation's time of need. When I heard that our community, especially in New York, stepped up, I was very happy and it was a heartwarming feeling to know that although you are not here with us physically, that in thought, in action, in, in prayer and in spirit, you were able to assist us in our response to the, the eruptions at the Lassifrey volcano. I also want to thank Council General Prince, um, who through our consulate in New York was able to facilitate the donations that were being made by members of um, our Vincentian community in the United States. I have always said since I've um, become minister that our missions overseas, they have their, their task and the way that our missions were able to facilitate and execute in the wake of the Lassifre volcano um, is testament to them performing their task and doing so well. So I want to take the opportunity to publicly commend Council General Prince and his team at the consulate and all our missions overseas for the hard work that you've been doing in keeping in touch with our Vincentian communities wherever they may be and facilitating them in assisting us whenever it is needed and whenever um, it is necessary. So once again, I want to say thank you very much. The Kingstown Town Board of Braxa, the Fire Department of the Royal St. Vincent and the Grenadines Police Force and the prisons all received donations of various equipment to further enhance their current cleanup efforts and beyond. For the API, I'm Hala John. This is CARICOM Secretary General Irwin Larock. I took the jab, the COVID-19 vaccine. I'm encouraging you, my brothers and sisters, to join me. Take the jab and observe the protocols. We're saving lives and jobs. Raise your voices! Welcome back. The UK SVG Friendship Trust donated 330,000 Eastern Caribbean dollars to the government of St. Vincent and Grenadines to assist with relief efforts following the explosive eruptions of the Latifre volcano. In raising the $330,000 donated, the trust partnered with the SVG High Commission in London. The National Council of St. Vincent and Grenadines Association UK and over 7,000 donors. Darian Oliver, local representative for the Trust, said he is pleased to hand over the monies to the government and peoples of St. Vincent and the Grenadines. The UK SVG Friendship Trust is quite pleased to be making a presentation to the government and people of St. Vincent and the Grenadines in the sum of $330,000. This is in keeping with our commitment to providing support and relief um, in the relief efforts to the people of St. Vincent and the Grenadines following the eruption of the last Sufre volcano. Now, over the past several months, we have had quite a number of persons being displaced uh, because of the volcanic eruptions. And apart from that, over the last many months, we have seen St. Vincent and the Grenadines facing a number of challenges, everything from COVID-19 pandemic to storms, a hurricane, dengue, and other things. So the government is truly facing an, a, a great challenge in meeting the needs of everybody who has been affected by all of these challenges. And so 
bearing in mind particularly the displacement of persons from the volcanic eruption, the UK SVG Friendship Trust is making this presentation to the government to assist with its um, efforts in meeting the needs of those persons who are still um, displaced, whether it be in shelters or in private homes, but away from their own homes. And by extension, that we can also support those persons who are returning to the, the native homes, but at this point trying to rebuild their lives. So the Trust has partnered with the SVG High Commission and the National Council of St. Vincent and the Grenadines Association UK, and has also received support from over 7,000 donors to make this donation possible. So, on behalf of the UK SVG Friendship Trust, I would like to invite the Minister to accept this donation on behalf of our Trust and all of our donors on behalf of St. Vincent and the Grenadines. Senator and Minister of State within the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, the Honourable Kiesel Peters, received a cheque on behalf of the Government and people of SVG and thanked the UK SVG Friendship Trust for their donation. I just want to say on behalf of the government and people of St. Vincent and the Grenadines, a very hearty thank you to the UK SVG Friendship Trust for the donation of the sum of 330,000 EC dollars. And I also want to recognize the work of the SVG High Commission in London for facilitating this process to enable persons to give what they had in order to support the persons who are affected by the La Sofre volcano. I also want to thank our diaspora groups who were very instrumental in giving um, support, whether it was monetary or by way of goods and supplies. And I just want to thank as well the friends of SVG who may not have Vincentian roots or who may not have even visited St. Vincent, but they heard of our plight and they answered the call and they worked together with the SVG, the UK SVG Friendship Trust to make this donation possible. And I just want to thank everyone who was involved and no doubt these funds um, will be used to assist the many persons who have been displaced. Although many persons have moved back to their homes, there is now the resettling period and then there are persons who are still in shelters these funds will be utilized to assist them as well so once again on behalf of the government and people of st vincent and the grenadines i would wish to thank the uk svg friendship trust and it would be remiss of me if i did not mention as well the st vincent cooperative bank for facilitating um this donation being made today and you know we all know St. Vincent Cooperative Bank as the Penny Bank. Um, I want to thank them as well for making this possible. Thank you very much. Women urge to look out for the science of cervical cancer. More when the APIs and government continues. The hurricane season is upon us, and as we know, hurricanes can be dangerous. Listening to the hurricane warning messages and planning ahead can reduce the chances of injury or major property damage. Before a storm or hurricane hits, get to know your emergency shelters. Contact Nemo for the closest shelter to you. Have disaster supplies on hand, flashlight and extra batteries, portable battery-operated radio and extra batteries, first aid kit, non-perishable canned food and water, non-electric can opener, essential medicines, cash and credit cards, and sturdy shoes and raincoats. Where possible, apply hurricane roof straps. Review your insurance policy and ensure you have adequate coverage. Do not take chances with your life and property. Be hurricane ready today. Welcome back. You are watching the APIs and government. Be informed. Be aware of what is happening in your body. These are the words from obstetrician gynecologist Dr. Damaris Batiste. Dr. Batiste, a consultant at the Milton Cato Memorial Hospital, led an all-vincentian medical team to perform a radical hysterectomy on a patient with early stages of cervical cancer. Here's more in this following interview conducted by Mrs. Donette Kodogan, Health Promotions Officer in the Ministry of Health, Wellness and the Environment. 
Healthcare in St. Vincent and the Grenadines continues to evolve and our young doctors rise to the challenge. Today we have with us Dr. Damaris Batiste. Dr. Batiste, thank you for joining us today. Thank you very much for having me. Can you introduce yourself to our listeners? Sure. So, as you would have mentioned, my name is Dr. Damaris Batiste. I am actually Vincentian and hail from a very beautiful village of Calder. I did all my uh, primary and secondary school education here and then went uh, abroad to become a doctor and then specialized in obstetrics and gynecology and then I did a subspecialty in gynecology oncology. Gynecology oncology. Can you tell us more about your journey to become a gynecology oncologist? Oh wow, that was a pretty long journey. Uh, it started uh, while I was actually in the specialty program of obstetric and gynecology. It was mandated that we do three months of an elective period in gyne oncology. And I guess while doing that elective period, I recognized I had a, a knack for it. I loved it. I actually had a good rapport and communication skills with our you know, terminal patients or even in terms of counseling, I recognized that you know I, I kind of shined. So my mentors noticed it and would have helped to kindle the fire that was already there. And when the opportunity came to actually be able to be in a program that allowed me to do gynae oncology, which was immediately after I finished subspecializing. I actually enrolled at the University of the West Indies and uh, this program was in liaison with the International Gynae Society of Cancer and I was one of the inaugural candidates that started this program in the Caribbean. Me and uh, my other colleague, two of us, we both started and we're, we're the first ones who completed it. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Now in St. Vincent and the Grenadines, we've been hearing a lot recently about different reproductive problems with women. So we hear a lot now about um, fibroids and polycystic ovary syndrome and mm -hmm. all these different things. Mm -hmm. Can you tell us how women can cope during these times and during these problems? What should they do? Well, you know, you're absolutely right. These problems really they're not just a physical problem, but they can be very emotional and uh, cause women to have uh, very depressive sy symptoms and their coping skills could be <sighs> tested. And uh, the advice that I would give to these women is to recognize that you know help is there. And uh, sometimes you have to be very in tune with your body to understand what is happening so that when something seems a little abnormal, you seek help. So sometimes all these different symptoms, as you would have mentioned, fibroids, polycystic ovarian syndrome, adenomyosis, endometriosis, the symptoms can sometimes overlap with each other. So it is important to know what is your normal so that when something seems abnormal, when your menstrual uh, period seems a little different than you're used to, you immediately seek help, get help, so that a diagnosis could be made early and the support that you would need would be given to you. So that's pretty much what I would say at this time. There are so many different gynecological cancers. Is there any way of eradicating them? Absolutely. And when you talk about gynecological cancers, you're thinking of cancers that originate, let's start from the top, which would be your ovaries, your uterus, your cervix, uh, your vagina and your vulva. And uh, while all of these cancers can't be considered as a, you know, lumped together, if we look specifically, let's say cervical cancer, which is one of those cancers that are, you know, raging and very dominant in our Caribbean society, this is one of those cancers that can be eradicated. It's very important to understand that there are screening methods that are available to not only detect, but you know, diagnose and treatment can be implemented early. 
it's also important to consider screening in terms of detecting precancerous and pre-invasive lesions that's just before they get to cancer so that you know treatment can be offered cervical cancer is one of those cancers that is associated with the human papilloma virus and uh, the vaccine is available now which is the hpv vaccine and this has been proven, tested and tried to even help to eradicate cancer. So it is for us to understand that screening vaccination programs are important because when you're actually faced with a diagnosis of cervical cancer, this diagnosis in our population seems to be popping up more and more later at advanced stages. And by then, you know, the, the horse has left the stable and getting the treatment which is necessary to help to even offer a glimpse of cure can be very difficult because that would include things like uh, chemo radiation which we don't have in in st vincent and uh, the sequelae or the pathway is very sad to watch you know patients suffer they go into renal failure they have tremendous abdominal pain and the quality of life just diminishes very quickly so if there's something we can do about it, then I would greatly advocate that women try to get their pap smears, uh, uh, children between, especially females, between the ages of 9 to 11. Ask your gynecologist, ask your district doctors about you know, vaccinating them to prevent cervical cancer. There are other uh, cancers of gynecological origin, such as you know, endometrial cancer. It's very important for, for people to understand what is abnormal. Having bleeding after menopause is abnormal. So if anybody is sitting out there and you know, you're, you're having bleeding after you would have gone through menopause, then seek help because we can always do diagnostic testing to try to detect whether this is you know endometrial cancer or cancer originating from the womb and then early intervention can can be offered to you which is surgical intervention you mentioned that women should have regular pap smear how regular is regular okay so you know there are different guidelines all over the world but in the caribbean we have noted that the particular strain of HPV that is dominant uh, or common in St. Vincent, for example, this is a very high risk strain. And by that I mean this strain can uh, cause a patient to develop cancer in their latter stages if the HPV virus isn't cleared. So we like to advocate that you do your yearly pap smears from the age of uh, 21 regardless if you're sexually active or not when i say sexually active i mean penetrative sex we like to uh, advocate that from the age of 21 and you visit or have a regular gynecologist if a decision is made to you know space the, the time then they will guide you but it's based on what the preliminary results would show in the early stages of actually being introduced to pap smears so if we want to have a blanket rule i'll say yearly until told by a gynecologist you could have uh, your your interval spaced apart i know earlier when we spoke you mentioned that um, in St. Vincent and the Grenadines, we did our first radical hysterectomy with all Vincentian doctors. Can you tell us more about that procedure? Yes, so a radical hysterectomy is really a, a very uh, advanced form of a hysterectomy. It is a procedure that is aimed to removing the uterus, tubes, ovaries, parametral tissue that tissue is the tissue that is on the lateral parts of the cervix and the, the uterus and also uh, a cuff of the vagina and this uh, surgery is offered to patients with early stages of uh, cervical cancer so that would be at least a stage 1b1 and less so we offer this uh, uh, surgery to, to patients that uh, we're aiming to cure and we would have uh, done this surgery here very successfully 
it took us about three to four hours and I'm very pleased to say that we got our histological report back and you know all the margins are cleared so that means this patient can now have a normal life and would and is deemed cancer free. Well, congratulations to Thank you, you very and your much. team. Thank you very I much. I mean, that means for St. Vincent that we don't have to bring in doctors to do this surgery and we do not have to travel outside to get it Absolutely. done. Absolutely. That is truly a milestone. Thank you. Thank Dr. You. Batiste, as we close, what advice do you have for the Vincentian public? Well, my advice to our Vincentian public would be to be informed, be aware of what is happening to your body don't take for granted symptoms don't stay at home and just you know think that it will pass or you could take some bush or some herbs but anything that is uh, that feels abnormal for example you're having bleeding after menopause you're spotting in between periods you notice abdominal distension you're having burning and urination any of these gynecological common symptoms please seek help visit your district doctor or any gyneco gynecologist and get help so it, it starts with patients or people taking responsibility for their health get your pap smears done and uh, mothers and fathers with teenage children consider getting the HPV vaccine. This has helped and is helping others to eradicate cervical cancer. We still have a high cervical cancer rate in St. Vincent. And you know, it's my dream that by 2030, cervical cancer can be eradicated in, in St. Vincent. So that's the advice I'll give now. Before you go, how can the people reach you? Well, I'm a consultant, obstetrician, gynecologist and gynae oncologist at the Milton Cato Memorial Hospital. I do have a gynae oncology clinic at the hospital. I also operate privately and practice privately at the Victor Medical Center and our number there is 4561927. You can reach us there. Okay, thank you very much Dr. Batiste and do continue serving the people of St. Vincent. Thank Vincent. you very much. The public is asked to take note of the following announcement. The Government of St. Vincent and the Grenadines took the decision on Tuesday, 13th July 2021 that residents of the communities of Fitzhughes and Chateau Belair, who evacuated due to the explosive eruptions of the Lassevere volcano, can return home on Friday, 23rd July 2021. The decision was taken at a meeting of the National Emergency Council held at the Foreign Affairs Conference Room. The volcano alert level remains at orange. The Caribbean Examinations Council CXC, is aware that some candidates may be noting some changes in their electronic timetables available in the CXC online student portal. CXC is working to rectify the issue as quickly as possible. Students should be guided by their printed timetables as all examinations will be administered as scheduled. Where candidates may not have collected their printed timetables, they should review the master timetable on the CXC website. CXC apologizes for any inconvenience caused. Please be advised that the activities for the new academic year 2021-2022 will be conducted in accordance with the following dates. First term, Professional Development Week, September 20th to the 24th, 2021, reopening of schools, October 4th, 2021, end of term 1, December 17th, 2021, Christmas break for two weeks, second term, January 3rd, 2022 to April 1st, 2022, Easter break, two weeks, August 4th to the 15th, third term, April 19th to July 1st, 2022. For more information, you can visit our Facebook page at API SVG. And that's how we end the APS and government. Thanks for viewing. If you've missed any of our past programs, you can catch these on our YouTube or Facebook pages at API, the Agency for Public Information, St. Vincent and the Grenadines. Or join us on our website at www.api.gov.vc. 
Join us again on Thursday for another edition of Iron Government. On behalf of our production team, thanks for viewing. I am Bavin Oliver. Have a good evening.